These are some of the people of Africa. People of many nations and cultures. Of many races and backgrounds. Who are they? What are their ways of living? There are 250 million people in Africa, but most live within a few hundred miles of the coasts. Large areas of the interior remain all habitable. In the north is the Great Sahara, a huge dry area. Only on the fringe of the desert, near water, can people make... Most North Africans live along the River Nile or near the Mediterranean Sea, where over the centuries, great cities like Cairo have developed. Here, most people are of Arab descent. Some of the women wear veils to hide their faces from curious eyes. This is a sign of Islam, a religion introduced by the Arabs more than a ago. It's called mosques. Faithful Muslims come to rest and pray. Long ago, Arab caravans carried Islam across the desert to the black peoples. Africa, south of the Sahara, is the homeland of the Negroes. Once, they were concentrated in the Niger-Congo basin. But about 2,000 years ago, they began to migrate to all parts of the continent, developing a variety of cultures. The Negroes, or Bantu, reached South Africa more than three centuries ago. Today, their lives are often a mixture of modern and traditional culture. Many of the men work in large towns during the week. And when they return to the tribal villages on the wind, it is a happy occasion. Especially for Malumba, who has been expecting someone in particular. This is Nagoto. He is proud of his new bicycle, which even has a radio. The women in the village have much to talk about, for they know that Malumba plans to marry her young man. They have seen Nagoto wearing Malumba. The whole village takes part in the wedding preparations. These women are brewing the wedding beer, which everyone will drink. Even children are allowed to taste a little. The men work to build a new hut for the couple, while their wives put on the mud walls. But the bride-to-be must herself decorate the outside of the hut. The time of the wedding is drawing near, and the villagers begin to assemble. In one final ceremony, the bride pretends to kick out the fire in front of her new hut. If she succeeds, she can still call off the wedding. But Malumba doesn't try very hard, for she very much wants to be married to Nagoto. This spear belonged to Malumba's family. And when it is placed on the roof of her father-in-law's hut, it means the two families are joined. 
Now, here comes the bride. Being carried over the threshold of her new home. The wedding is over, but the village will go on celebrating until evening, when the men must return to work in the city. Not far away, in the Kalahari Desert, live a much more primitive people. These are the Bushmen, whose slant eyes have an almost oriental cast. They work long and hard, making simple tools and weapons. But when game is scarce, they must subsist on wild berries and ostrich eggs. Because it seldom rains, they store the precious water in empty shells. In this way, a thirsty child can always have a drink. In the dense forest regions near the equator live another primitive people, the pygmies. A full-grown pygmy stands only four and a half feet tall. They roam the forest, hunting wild game with poison darts. Sometimes when relaxing, they like to make music on an instrument called a thumb piano. Unlike the pygmies, most of the people in the forest region are farmers who settle in small villages where they grow enough food to eat. In this area, the fruit of the oil palm is an important food. Using a short length of rope, this man can easily climb the tall palm trees and harvest the ripe kernels. During the dry season, which the people call the hungry season, these dry kernels are often their only food. That is why each year, when the rainy season comes again, there is dancing and celebration, with the whole village joining in. also important to the cattle herding peoples who live on East Africa's plains. Tribes such as the Maasai have built their culture around cattle. The cattle not only provide them with food, but are used as money and a man counts his wealth by the number of cows he owns. But people who live in the old ways are fewer and fewer in Africa today. All over the continent, modern cities have grown up. activity is everywhere. At this housing project in Uganda, 
Some of the engineers are of Indian population. Most originally came during colonial times as railroad laborers. But today, many have become businessmen and merchants. They are Hindus and often live near their colorful Kutch temples. Along the African coasts, old forts are reminders of the many years of European rule. Europeans first came in the 15th century as traders in gold and slaves. In 300 years, they took over 15 million slaves from West Africa alone. Later, many European farmers settled in eastern and southern Africa. Here, the climate is mild and ideal for livestock and dairy farming. In South Africa, the discovery of gold and diamonds brought thousands of European immigrants who founded great cities such as Johannesburg. Today, more than three million people of European descent live in South Africa. Many have lived here for generations and no longer think of themselves as Europeans. This is the family of John Forbes, a veterinarian in Rhodesia. He was born in Africa and knows no other home. His job is to help wipe out disease among the great herds of wild game. From a diseased animal that has been shot, John draws a blood sample, which he takes back to analyze in his laboratory. As he works, he is silently teaching his skills to Mbutu, who will one day also become a veterinarian. Today, the people of Africa are advancing more rapidly than any others in the world. In this modern Nairobi hospital, Africans of many origins are working together. Indian. Negro. Arab. And European. All working to help Africa at last take its place in the modern world. 